Good morning, my creative friends. This is Dr. Manette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs live with Manette, where you got me crazy hair and a little bit sleepless this morning. I am just back from nine beautiful days away in Asheville, North Carolina, a town that I adore. And I attended an event called Tangle You, which is a basically a continuing education conference for certified Zen Tangled teachers. I was there with, I don't know, 60 plus other CZTs, as we're called, learning all kinds of new things and getting super inspired. And then my husband and I celebrated our, my hair is super crazy, 27th wedding anniversary and spent a few extra days playing and soaking up the spring. It was so beautiful to be someplace where it was really, really green. And I have missed that green. And we came home to things just starting to bloom here. So it was fun to get spring there and know that we're going to enjoy spring here as well over the ne next few weeks. And I always notice a little bit of hesitation or reluctance when I've been gone for a week or longer, to how to get back into my creative groove. Good morning, Tori. Great to see you here. And so I want to share some of the ways that after an absence from your studio, how can you find your creative groove again? And the, the secret is, one, to just do it. But there's also some other ways that I wanted to share that I find myself getting reengaged. And my cats are being bonkers this morning, so you probably see them running around in the background here for a minute. But one of the number one ways that I like to get inspired is with my photographs that I took while traveling. Now, what if you have been just really busy and so you have it making art how do you find that groove again the secret is to play oftentimes the secret is to go back to your own photographs that you maybe have taken recently they don't have to be from travel or go walk outside and take a photo so i want to show you uh, one of the photos that i took and how i'm going to take that into some playtime this morning in my journal so let me switch my camera here and we're going to get going. So I'm going to be just painting and playing with acrylic paint in my art journal. I have already uh, taken a couple of pages in the journal I've been working in for a little while now and added some gesso to those pages. And I'm going to come back over here. And uh, there were the azaleas were blooming. They were abs absolutely beautiful. And these were blooming in the midst of some ivy so we have some different color greens here I loved also this was um, a hemlock I believe and the new growth look at that crazy bright green on the the center there but I what I was inspired to paint this morning <coughs> excuse me and of course I left my water bottle on my other desk were these gorgeous rhododendrons and one of the lessons from the experience at Tingle U that was really fun was about going bigger and bolder. And so I've taken a few different photos of these rotos, some from a distance, some in clusters a little bit closer, and then some really big close-ups of rhododendrons. And it was really rainy that last morning, so everything is covered in dew drops as well, but I'm really inspired by the, the colors and the textures of these rotos. So I'm super excited to play with some rhododendrons this morning. I am going to grab my bottle of water. Good morning, Marion. And I don't have a ton of projects to show off this morning um, some of them are in my luggage and I made it home but my luggage has not yet made it home but I think I do have the um, so we learned some great like sketchbook techniques and so I know I'm, I'm being chatty this morning this was my airplane work in my hundred day project but my friend Nisha taught this fun class where he gave us a photograph of a piece of fabric and then had a sort of draw out from that and then I did one more and it was such a great practice so I'm probably going to be doing some of this 
But what I wanted to show you, and then I'm going to dive into painting. Thanks, Kay. Super happy to be back with all of you. I have a studio session tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We did this beautiful butterfly project with my friend Annie Reiser. Um, but I loved this idea, and I want to maybe take this into my journal from a teacher named Chris Titus, who I love, about going bigger and bolder with our work. And it was funny because I read an article in Studio Works Journal this morning about Georgia O'Keeffe and how Georgia O'Keeffe got in, you know, up close and personal to things. So we started with these few simple patterns and we drew them small. Then we drew them a little bit bigger. Then we drew them really big and bold and really worked on our shading. And it was such a great technique that gave me lots and lots to think about this morning. So I wanted to maybe play with that, with this idea of these rhododendrons this morning that were so, so beautiful. Uh, Asheville was absolutely gorgeous. And I'm gonna do this pretty abstractly, just playing with paint. Let me grab some paint. And there's a little bit of lavender, some pink in the lavender. I'm, I'm looking at the, the colors and they're they're varied, right? So it's kind of hard to see in the the bright light here, but there's a little bit of red, a little bit of lavender, a little bit of pink. So we're going to pull all these colors together and see what kind of mess we can make. And then maybe a couple of different colors of greens as well to see where can we get to with this idea. Diego, he's just like, he's in play mode and he's like roaming around just crying in the background. I don't know if you can hear him, but he's being quite noisy. So I'm gonna have some fun and just play with color this morning on the page. And again, I'm going to start with a pretty big photo of this, you know, roto in bloom. And it's just a lot of green and a lot of pink and not a lot of detail. So I'm going to start there and I'm going to start with my greens. And I'm literally just going to put these greens right smack on the page. So my theme for today was how do we get our groove when we've been out of the studio for a while? So one of the tips to do that, because I could have easily sat on the couch this morning and just kept drinking more and more coffee and not wanted to quite come down and face the, the studio yet. But here I am. I wasn't even sure what I was going to do when I started. So I'm using a filbert shaped brush, which is rounded at the tip, which gives some of those nice round leaf shapes. I'm not even going to worry about covering the, the whole page here. I also, there's some brown in the foreground. I've got like three shades of green that I'm going to mix together here. So how do we find our groove when we've been away for a while? And I was away for, I don't know, nine days. It seemed longer than that. Um, and it was a fun and very full trip. So I'm not going for realism here. I'm going for abstraction, right? I'm going for color play. I'm not trying to get, you know, the way that the, the leaves specifically grow. So Roto's, their leaves actually grow um, in a circular out of the, the stem. So when we get into more, you know, detailed work, I might go there. But for now, I just want to capture color and shape. And I would probably use a different brush if I were going that direction. But maybe I can start to bring in a little bit of that. Let's see if I got a longer round brush hanging around here. So that might look something, you know, even abstract, more like that. That brush is too small. But the number one way to find your groove in the studio again, after an absence from art making, is play. And photographs are a great way to find inspiration, especially our own photographs. 
And so one of the creative habits that is important to cultivate, very much like a sketchbook practice, is a photography practice, learning to just take pictures of everything wherever you are. And it's amazing how often I go back to my own pictures for palette inspiration. I cannot tell you guys how much I loved just being someplace with so much green. It just always really brightens up my heart so much to be in the space of the green. Okay, so I've got quite a bit of that darker green. I want to maybe get some of this lighter green down. And I'm always happy to come back to my studio. And I'm also happy to be away from my studio because there is fresh inspiration to be found in other places and other perspectives and points of view. I can get a lot of tunnel vision if I'm always looking at the same thing. And I can fall out of habit, my own creative habit, pretty quickly. So one of the ways that I stay inspired when I'm traveling is through photography. I drive my family crazy because I stop to take pictures of every single little flower and blooming thing. We went to a lovely little botanic garden in Asheville and things were just starting to bloom and there were so many huge trees like the most amazing old forest very different from other forests because they're all deciduous trees and you know i live near the mountains where it's mostly evergreen trees okay so i have this crazy page of green which is making me happy and it's taking me back to that place and that memory of the green so photography is one way to play the second way to play <clears throat> is collage, because we don't have to think a lot about it. So printing out some of your own photos and, <clears throat> excuse me, using them for collage. Trying to just get the lid back on the screen here. I got to meet an artist. Well, we met a few artists and had some lovely conversations. There's tons and tons of galleries, but last time we were there, we stumbled across a studio of an artist named Lori Portka who does really bright, beautiful work. I love her work. And she was in her studio this time, and so I got to have a chat with her, which was lovely. We found an artist whose paintings we fell in love with, so they, one of those may be in our future. So I was also inspired by other artists, right? So taking photos where allowed of other people's art for inspiration. You know, sometimes it was subject matter, sometimes it was a color palette, sometimes it was a, a technique. So looking for inspiration in other artists is another way to get your groove back. So I got that on there super thick. So I'm actually going to let that dry for a minute and then maybe come in and do one <clears throat> that's a little more close up of those leaves and some of those flowers. So I'm going to keep going <clears throat> with some of those greens, but I'm going to start to make them just a little bit bigger on the page. And they're... The rotos are kind of a funky, almost a little bit of that olivey green. So I'm going to mix some of these greens together and get a few bigger leaves. And their flowers glow, grow in clusters. And I took the pictures to send to my mother-in-law because she loves rhododendrons. And they have beautiful ones planted in their garden in Nova Scotia. But these days they live in... Vancouver on the opposite side of the country and so they <clears throat> miss the rotos in the spring because they're not there when they're blooming so as I'm looking at these I'm noticing they're actually sort of set apart and on a bit of a stem so I'm just sort of glancing at the photo 
And again, over here, we have some chaos. And again, over here, we have now something much bigger on the page. I think Diego's having a tantrum because we left him alone for so long. My son came in and looked after them. They're perfectly fine, but he's, you know, I think he's in that, hey, where have you been? I'm going to make as much noise as I can to get your attention. So there's an example <clears throat> of painting small, painting bigger. And then for me, the biggest one would be the least amount of green and the most about amount of pink. <clears throat> which would come on a different page. So I am going to play now with some of these. Do I want, I think I want, <clears throat> see if I can find some magenta in here. Yeah. Rather than a true red. So we've got pinks and magentas. And the flowers are so delicate, clustered up close. And there were azaleas blooming in colors that I hadn't seen before as well. These gorgeous oranges and peaches. <clears throat> Excuse me, not <clears throat> a lot of azaleas growing here. So I've got some fluorescent pink and some <clears throat> frog in my throat. <clears throat> Sorry, apologize. Early morning voice still. And a little lavender, a little fluorescent pink, a little quinacridone magenta. And I'm also going to come in with just a little bit of white on my palette. You can see my palette's a little messy. And I'm just going to mix those together a little bit. My friend Sherry was telling me about how she mixes fluorescence with other colors to give them some brightness that I hadn't thought about before. So I'm going to just come in here. Again, this was our abstract. Remembering that if you've ever seen a rhododendron shrub up close, the flowers grow kind of in big clusters. So I'm not trying to capture individual flowers here, but just the memory of the page. And this kind of play on the page is so good to just practice, right? I'm not trying to necessarily create anything perfect. Good morning, Blanca. I'm glad to be back. And then on this page, I'm going to start to go a little bit bigger, right? Go a little bit bigger. And the flowers actually sort of, and it's probably still wet in there, cluster around the leaves. The leaves are quite dominant, so we're going to make those clusters quite a bit bigger. And I just fell in love with this process that Chris talked to us about, because I think it's a great way to learn to, to see things even with the, the Zen Tangle patterns, right? Finding where the comfort zone was between the small patterns and the large patterns. Seeing the difference already just between these two pages of blooms. Okay, so I want to bring in just a little bit of that lavender. That might, may not even show in the light there, but some of the, the blooms had some of that lavender. So we want to just start to build up some of the color and the detail. I'm going to come back in with some of that pure magenta and some more white. And then pop in a little bit of that magenta, although the ones where you're looking at them from a distance, you don't see as much of that variety in color as you do. The closer you get, the more of that variety that you see. It is such a great exercise. And, um, you know, Chris was talking about doing it with the Zentangle patterns. And for me, this is like a great lesson I think we can take into anything. And I thought it was 
you know, when I saw this fantastic article about Georgia O'Keeffe, right? And, you know, when you think about her flowers and the skulls and the other imagery, <clears throat> how big she painted and how close up she got to things. All right, bring some of this, a little bit of this darker color that may even be a little too dark. But again, I'm just all about adding layers, right? All about adding layers. And already you can see how different they look just by doing these two simple pages. So again, this is a great way to Start to find that groove again is just to give yourself permission to play. There's no destination here. There's only, okay, Manette, what's that one thing that's going to bring me back to center again to have me like so fall in love with my own creative process that I can't help but want to show up again and again and again to the page? All right. I'm going to get just a touch of yellow. There's a little bit of yellow in between the blooms here. And I'm going to get a really clean, fresh brush. And I'm going to bring in some of those. And it's um, hard to tell sometimes if it's the the leaves that are branching out or if it's the you know, centers of the flowers themselves have just that maybe tiny little bit of yellow. They're really probably even more white than yellow. And they had a beautiful southern magnolia, which I had not seen before. My grandmother loved magnolias and had a beautiful one in her backyard, but a different variety in Texas than the one that I was seeing this southern magnolia. I've never seen magnolias that tall before. All right, so crazy page all over the place, right? And then getting simpler and simpler. And then I would let this get really dry and then on the next page go really big. And <clears throat> my sense right now is that this is going to take a long time to dry because I've really loaded in the paint. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that one aside to dry. And I'm just going to grab a piece of, this is just plain old printer paper, I think. Hi, Barbara. Thank you. Glad to be back. And I'm going to work on painting one of these rhododendron flowers large on the page. So we're going to load up with a little more pink, a little more white. And then this can get folded up and tucked right into my journal with the other pages. Get a nice dry brush. A little more of that magenta in there. That magenta makes the most beautiful, beautiful pink. So what I'm noticing as I get in, you know, really close is the ruffled edges. It has one, two, three, four, five, maybe six petals. This one's open pretty flat, right? And um, <clears throat> it's got these beautiful pattern designs. This one, it's covered in water drops. It's got some gorgeous stamen in there. And there's not a lot of yellow on the tips of some of the stamen there are. But inside of all of them are just these gorgeous little elements of pattern <clears throat> where they're still <clears throat> in bud. They're much darker. So I'm just going to dive in and go for it without trying to draw it first. And the, the sample that I'm looking at is actually fairly lavender. So again, this is about pure play, that spirit of pure play. 
<clears throat> there's nothing to be done here. This is about just learning. What can I learn from this practice and process? There's actually a seam, like a vein, almost like in a leaf right up the, the center of each of these leaves. <clears throat> and I'm just loosely, again, following that pattern. I'm just loosely following that pattern. Noticing where the lights and the darks are. It's funny, this paper is... Uh, thirsty that it's drinking up the the paint and, and drying really fast on the page. And I definitely want to brighten this up. They had very ruffledy edges, especially in the rain. Things were very curled up. So just having fun exploring the paint. Again, I'm not trying to make this perfect. I'm trying to just capture kind of some of the idea here, right? And then there's some others sort of hanging out in the background that I can't quite see in my photo. So maybe I'm just going to capture a little bit of that pink out there. And there seems to be one... Down here, it's all wrinkled. I can't tell if it's about to bloom or already bloomed. And there's one here that opens sidewards, which is also a really beautiful shape. Might be worthy of painting all on its own. And again, just getting the color down on the page. Long establishing shot, medium shot, close up, and it would be fun to include an extreme. Yes, absolutely. And I have that in mind for this one image here to do an extreme close up, sort of Georgia O'Keeffe style. But I'm working my way up to that, right? Working my way up to that. And that's where the photography is such a great inspiration because it allows us that opportunity to see what we can't see with our naked eye, right? To see what we can't see with our naked eye. And so right in the center, and it, this little pattern is just on one of the petals, which I find so fascinating. And it makes me wonder, is that beautiful pattern that's there designed to uh, attract the bees? What is the, the reason for that pattern? And then let's get some of these stamen in here. Again, I'm not really worrying about perspective right now or anything other than just loosely capturing the shape of the flower, right? Loosely capturing the shape of the flower. Not trying to make it realistic, just trying to just explore what is that feeling, that challenge of going from big to from small to bigger. And they all have this just fine little vein. It's funny because in the photograph, this one is quite a bit lavender, even more than the, the pinky of some of the other ones. And giving ourselves permission to just play this way, to not have it be perfect. It doesn't have to look exactly like it. We're just being inspired by, you know, something that Georgia O'Keeffe did was to paint very smoothly. Like she smoothed out the ruffles of things, right? Like her, everything, she managed to capture the edges of things. But and it's just, if you look, really zoom in on one of her, her paintings, 
the techniques she chose were very much about smoothing out the surface of things. Her paint was very smooth. There was, there was a uh, photographic quality to her art that I love. I love, I've been to her museum twice in Santa Fe. One of these days I would love to get out to Ghost Ranch where she lived and worked. And I am just playing with the paint here. And I'm thinking that I'm going to let all this dry. And then I'm going to want to print out one of these photos and really get the shape and the texture. But for now, I'm just enjoying the process. My goal for this morning was just to get back into the studio, to get some paint on paper, to not feel like I needed to have a destination in mind, but simply to have a place to start. I was down here, I don't know, about six o'clock, and I was, you know, looking. I have a, a painting on my easel that I'd started, and it felt a little daunting to start there. So that's, I started to ask myself that question. How can I get started again? And especially if you're someone that has kind of, you know, a variety of unfinished projects around the studio, those projects can be intimidating, right? I love a good finished project. I don't like lots of unfinished things cluttering up my studio. If I'm not finishing them, I'm probably not going to. So I've gotten very good at letting go of projects, right? And letting go of projects and not feeling the need to finish something. Now, when it's on canvas, it's easy because I can just paint over it. But I was working in this, you know, journal while I was gone and starting pages and then not feeling like I needed to finish them. Like there was benefit to just being in the Okay, I started this. This was interesting. What's next? Right? What's next? So giving yourself permission to play <clears throat> coloring pages are another great way to kind of just get ourselves <clears throat> back into our creative practice as well. Maybe some yellow mixed up in there. Let's just add a little. There, these leaves do tend to have quite a yellow vein. Now I've got yellow paint all over my fingers. Again, this is play and experimentation. There's, I'm not messing anything up. I'm just exploring to see what's possible on the page. I'm going to take a sip of water here. <laughs> So again, just that interesting exploration of how different each of these looks. It's such a great exercise. So we actually kind of did two different things today. We talked about some ways to get our groove back when we've been away from our practice. And then the number one thing is just start. Just go slap some paint on a page, grab a coloring book, draw a quick mandala, grab a photograph for inspiration, but just give yourself permission. Like, don't try to jump right back into a finished project because, or an unfinished project because that can feel daunting. It might take you a couple of days to maybe find that groove a little bit again. And so if you've been out of practice, do the thing that feels most fun. So for me, <clears throat> what feels most done or most fun this morning was this idea of just sitting here with some of my own photographs and being inspired by them. Any suggestions for allowing a piece to remain abstract? I start out intending to create an abstract, but then I work in details to make it even more realistic. Well, I have a couple of questions. Number one question is, does it need to be realistic? Is that a goal is to paint more realistic overall? If so, then my suggestion would be to 
like walk away from the piece, put it away for a week or two, and then come back to it later. So that's one thing is to give it, right, some breathing room of its own and to notice what it is that you love to paint. Because if what you really love to paint is not abstracts, but things that have more detail and more realism go there, right? Like having fun with abstract backgrounds is different than being able to then bring color back to that, that piece or detail back to that piece. So there's nothing wrong with starting off with that abstract background and then bringing in the elements that you love, right? Like I do that all the time. I come back with my Posca's and I start to add in some of those details. So I felt like this just needed a little bit more of those pops of color. But I think, you know, part of the process of painting is learning what you love. And abstracts for me are great tutorials, right? So I love to practice them, but I never end up loving the results as much as I do love some of my other work. But I think that number one thing is just to give it time, right? Just to give it time. All right, so there we have one more simple drawing. So let's look at all three of our drawings together. And also I would say when you're trying to get your groove back after an absence, and I've got wet paint here, let's see, and put some down over that. Um, when you're coming back after being away from art making for a while, I think part of the the trick is to not expect to go make art for hours and hours. Like don't go from not making art at all to spending hours in the studio, you know, trying to decide what to do. Instead, go in fits and starts, right? In little 30 minute increments, right? This was what, 37 minutes. And I talked for the first five or so, right? So I think that um, finding our groove again, using photos, starting simple, making it playful, just putting color on the page, starting with a color coloring book, um, are all ways that we, you know suggestions for getting ourselves back into the the process. And so this was a super fun exercise for me, inspired by a lesson from Tangle You, where I took this idea of going from smaller to bigger, to bigger, and even bolder. And so I think this is a great exercise in learning to see differently and learning to play with color. And um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I'm super happy to, to be back this month. I've been kind of thinking about a theme for May and thinking it may be something to do with blooms and painting flowers in different ways, but I don't know yet. So stay tuned. It might take me all week to figure it out, or maybe I'll paint flowers this week because I did have so much fun taking pictures of all the, the things that were blooming. But getting our groove back is all about just finding the habit again. And sometimes it's 10 minutes, sometimes it's 30 minutes. Don't expect to go from not making art to all of a sudden spending hours. Uh, watching YouTube videos like this one is another great way to get your groove back. Like take a lesson, go find something that someone else has done and see what you can come up with. So I'm super happy to be back here live with all of you after my week away. Thank you for joining me from bigger, um, from going from small to big and looking at just some simple playful ways to get our groove back. I will see you guys all tomorrow with probably something floral. We shall see. I reserve the right to change my mind, but it felt good to just get down here, get paint on my hands, get some paint on the page, and capture the memory of these just beautiful, huge hedges of rhododendrons. Um, Georgia's back in my lap. You can see her knows here. She's very happy that mama is back as well. So thank you all so much. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.